you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. I do apologize that the question is probably small on your device screen and it may be hard to read, but basically what we're trying to do is determine how many years after production the oil well will be producing at maximum capacity. And this question is actually a little bit tricky because a lot of people would read maximum or maximum capacity and they would think that they're trying to find the time at which this function is maximized. But in fact, this function gives us the total production of oil. So if the question had asked, find the time at which the total production of oil was at a maximum, then indeed we would be maximizing this function right here. But that's not what the question is asking. It's asking us to find the time at which the production is at maximum capacity. And so basically, and there's a little bit of a hint there in the parentheses, but at maximum capacity, what we really are looking for is the maximum rate of production of oil. That's actually what we're trying to maximize, is not the function itself, not the total production of oil, but we're trying to maximize the rate of production of oil. And so if you think about that, you're maximizing the rate, not the original function. And so in fact, we need not the original function, we need the derivative. And then once we have the derivative, we're going to try to find the maximum of that derivative, or more precisely, the time at which that maximum occurs. So let's actually transform this original function giving us the total production of oil into the rate of production of oil. That means we have to compute the derivative. And to do that, it may be first advantageous to rewrite the function. Now we have a constant multiplied by this term multiplied by this exponential term. We know from the commutative property of multiplication that the order in which we multiply quantities doesn't matter. So it's going to be advantageous to rewrite this as follows. We're going to have negative 1000 e to the negative 0.1t, and then we're gonna multiply that quantity by t plus 11. And then we have the addition of this constant here. Now, we're going to compute the derivative, and perhaps we'll notice that we have this term right here being multiplied by this term right here. And in order to compute the derivative of the product of two separate functions, we have to employ the product rule. Now, the product rule can be symbolized as follows. We can write it as fig plus gif. This is kind of a mnemonic device that will help us remember the product rule. If using this mnemonic device, then what you want to do is define your f function as the first function. So basically the one that's highlighted in yellow that's going to be our f function, always going to be the first function of the product. And then the g is going to be the second function of the product. In order to use the product rule, we also need the derivative of these pieces here. We need the derivative of f and we need the derivative of g. Now, the derivative of g is actually pretty easy. We have t plus 11, so the derivative of t is just one and then the derivative of 11 is zero. So you have one plus zero, which is just one. Over here, we have the exponential term, e to the negative 0.1t. And then we have a constant in front of it. When you compute the derivative of a constant multiplied by this exponential function, you're going to retain the constant. So you'll have negative 1,000. And then to do the derivative of the exponential term, what you do is take the derivative of this power, and the derivative of negative 0.1t, of course, is just negative 0.1 and then you multiply that by the original exponential function, which is e to the negative 0.1t. So there is the f prime. It may be useful to multiply the negative 1000 by the negative 0.1, which is actually 100. So we're gonna write f prime as 100 e to the negative 0.1t. Now that we have our f and our g, as well as our f prime and our g prime, what you'll do is plug it into this formula, this fig plus gif, as I like to call it. So for the f prime, we have the 100 e to the negative 0.1 t multiplied by g, which is t plus 11. 
And then we add that to g prime, which is just one multiplied by f, which is the negative 1000 e to the negative 0.1 t. And that is the derivative of that oil production function. So we can write that as capital T prime of t. Now, remember, we're not trying to maximize the original oil production function. We're trying to maximize the rate of that function. That is what this equation represents right here. This is the rate of the oil production function. We need to find the maximum, or rather the time at which the maximum occurs. Basically, you can think of this function, if we were to graph it, as having a point right here at which the slope of that tangent line would equal zero. But just remember, we're trying to maximize the derivative. So in fact, what we're doing is imagine that we're graphing this t prime function here. This is t prime, we're plotting it against t. We're trying to find the maximum. So to find the maximum of that t prime function, we have to take its derivative. So in fact, we do need to do another derivative. We have to do t double prime of time here. And to do that, unfortunately, we have to do another product rule. We have the product of this function and this function here. So we're just gonna step aside and do one more product rule. We'll let our f equal the 100 e to the negative 0.1 t, and then the g is the t plus 11. Remember the f is the first function and the g is the second function. So the f prime, we operate in the same way that we proceeded earlier. We keep the constant, we multiply by the derivative of this exponent up here, which is negative 0.1, and then we recopy the exponential term, so e to the negative 0.1 t. And then g prime would be the derivative of t plus 11, that's just again 1. We can clean this up here a little bit. We could do 100 multiplied by negative 0.1. This gives us negative 10. So the f prime is actually negative 10 e to the negative 0.1 t. Okay, so we're going to plug all components. We've got the f and the g, the g prime and the f prime, and it's going to be fig plus gif. Remember, this is the derivative of this product right here. So fig plus gif, we would have negative 10 e to the negative 0.1 t, that's our f prime, times our g, which is t plus 11, plus g prime, which is just 1, multiplied by f, which is the 100 e to the negative 0.1 t. So that would be the derivative of this term, or product of terms right here. Let's just clear out a little bit of space here because we also need to do the derivative of this term here. This one is inconsequential, we don't need it. So we're really just doing the derivative of this, same ball game here, we're going to keep that leading constant. You're gonna keep that negative 1,000. You're gonna multiply that by the derivative of this power, which is negative 0.1, and then multiply that by the original exponential function, e to the negative 0.1t. Okay, so this is the derivative of the derivative. It's the derivative of the rate of change in the oil production function. To maximize, we set the derivative equal to zero. And we're trying to solve this for t, and it looks pretty ghastly, but if you look carefully, there's actually a greatest common factor. We have this e to the negative 0.1 t present in this first block of terms, and then we have that same exponential term right there, and then we have it again right there. So basically, it's a greatest common factor. We're gonna factor it out. We're gonna have e to the negative 0.1 t, and then that's gonna be multiplied by, well, a conglomeration of terms here. Basically, since you factored it out, you might wanna to try to imagine that it has disappeared right now. We've pulled it out into the front. What remains is this negative 10 multiplied by t plus 11, and then we have plus the one times 100, which is just 100, of course. And then we have minus 1000 multiplied by negative 0.1. And this is all set equal to zero. Now, we wanna clean up what's inside of the brackets here. We'll keep the exponential GCF on the outside. We're gonna distribute the negative 10, so we're gonna have negative 10t minus 110 plus 100, and then if you multiply negative 1,000 by negative 0 0.1, you're gonna get plus 100. This is all set equal to zero. We can perhaps combine some like terms here. It looks like we have this negative 110 plus 100 plus 100. 
So negative 110 plus 100 plus 100 is 90. So in fact, now you have e to the negative 0.1t, and then you have negative 10t plus 90 equals 0. Now, we have the product of two factors. And when we have the product of two factors set equal to 0, we can set each factor equal to 0. We have e to the negative 0.1t is equal to 0, and then negative 10t plus 90 is equal to 0. Now, we might recognize that on the left side here, this equation has no real solution. To kind of prove that to ourselves, we might take the natural log of both sides. So if we take the ln on this side and the ln on that side, what's nice is the ln and the e will cancel out, and that leaves us with negative 0.1t. However, and you can do this on your calculator, if you try the ln of 0, you're going to get an undefined result. So there's no real solution or no solution at all on this side of things. But on the other side, it's rather easy. We just subtract 90 to the other side. We have negative 10t equals negative 90, and then divide both sides by negative 10, and you get t equals 9. So if you consider this sort of rudimentary graph over here, the maximum of the t prime function is going to occur when the slope is equal to 0, and we just determined that that occurs when t equals 9. So that answers the question, because the question said, to find the number of years after production at which we reach maximum capacity. So that's going to be t is equal to nine years, the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.